What's up Capricorn friends? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. Happy to have the Capricorns and Crosswashers out there. This is going to be your September monthly. Uh, the majority of it will be career and finances. So I say like, you know, 75% career and finances. I will timestamp towards the end where I will throw in a few messages about love and romance for those looking for that. But if not, settle in, we're going to do career and finances. Uh, I do love pretty much weekly, if not bi-weekly. So if you're looking for something more extensive in love, feel free to check those out. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, general messages here on YouTube. That's what I do. Not everything will be your message. Please your own, uh, use your own discretion, your discernment, your intuition uh, to separate the messages that serve you and those that don't. Highly encourage you um, to take away messages that motivate you, inspire you, empower you, confirm something you're thinking or feeling. If you're just checking in on the energies, that's all fine. Don't take action on energy that feels strange or foreign. If it's not your message, if you don't relate to the story, give it time. It might make sense later on, or it just simply might not be your message. If that is the case, never be offended. It won't be every time, okay? Those are my rules, Capricorn. I think most of you already know, but to the newbies, welcome. Happy to have you. To those returning, welcome back. You guys are the coolest. Thank you for supporting me and my channel. Um, Let's hop in. Let's get some cards, some shuffles going for Capricorn. Everything else you want to know about this video will be down below in the box, including the decks I'm using here today, as well as my social media. I am the Intuitive Teacup on Facebook, Instagram, dot com. If you want to book a personal, that's all down below. Um, yeah, let's, we're going to hop in. You got cards coming out. So you have a good amount of Major Arcana and People cards. In fact, you have mostly entirely Major Arcana. So that typically that's good, but that does mean major things are coming up in your career. Particularly a contract, yeah, getting some sort of call, a phone interview, it could be that uh, telecommuting I just heard, but no, a job where you spend a majority of the time on the phone, it could be a sales call, or it could be recruiter, it could be something that's done very heavily uh, via like mobile, or maybe you sell, sell cell phones or work for a, uh, you know, satellite company or something like that. Something with the phone is very important. I mean, and if nothing else, for a majority of you, you're probably going to get a phone call regarding your career and finances, right? So I mean, obviously this can go in many different directions, but yeah, justice is typically contracts. Uh, frequently it can be a contract of marriage or a contract of business. It is Libra energy. Uh, there is an element of very traditional to, to this. Um, uh, it, it's sword energy, right? Libra, so using the mind, the intellect, uh, making smart choices, which I know seems like, well, duh, but not everybody does that, Capricorn, believe it or not. Sagittarius, for instance. No, I'm just kidding. All my Sag cross watchers are like, what did she just say? No, temperance is about patience. It's about internal balance. Again, a card of Sagittarius. Keeping one foot in that pool of intuition, creativity, joy, spirituality, and the other on earth, on land, firmly footed, right? Um, so it's actually saying to me, because you are an earth sign, don't be afraid to, to dip your toe into the unknown, to dip your toe into something that feels a little bit more adventurous or a little bit more different. It doesn't mean jump in head first, but you know, you're testing the waters, right? A lot of you are going to be called to test the waters on something that you may feel a little bit out of your elements, particularly earth and water, right? It could be someone you're working with as well. Um, but yeah, I, I see positive things there for you. I mean, just those three cards in a row are, are pretty insane. If you are doing anything like, uh, even if you're working as a telemarketer or making uh, calls via phone or sales over the phone, even if you're just reaching out to, to clients from your past to try and you know increase your income, I think you're gonna dominate the field there. Or there's something very powerful about about your maybe it's just your your speaking uh your speaking presence that's not what i mean your your strength of character that that is even projected just via your voice on phone calls on a microphone are you doing announcements for something there's something very powerful about your tone i'm sort of that it gets people to want to buy so again translate that into whatever your profession is your phone demeanor your your personality it shines through and it makes people want to work with you and so if that doesn't sound like you, maybe it, for some of you, it's a message of putting more personality into your work because, you know, knowing what I know about my Capricorns, your work ethic is not typically in question. You guys typically, that's like a, a slam dunk, right? That's a home run. Your work ethic might be on point, but in, so in that case, it may be saying, 
Where's the personality, though? Where's that little uh, creative spark, that charisma? That It's almost like a, a your, your calling card, your signature. What is your signature move, Capricorn, that makes you different from the rest? Just that little bit of personality, that little extra touch, that follow-up email you send, that whatever. It's just, yeah, that's really what this message is. It's saying add a little sparkle of your own personality. What's your calling card, right? That, that's what I'm getting from that. You have two cards depicting old-timey landline telephones. So, yeah, some of you may be working in, like, for Verizon or for AT&T or maybe it's an Internet service or something about kind of, like, technology-based things. And in, in Virgo season, which is ruled by Mercury, right, There, there's a theme there, right? Those opportunities may be, may be coming into you. Or, again, if we're just whittling it down to very basic messages, a, a positive phone call, a message or a word comes to you that... This is the um, the Knight of Cups. So again, the Knight of Love, of Faith, Spirituality, Creativity. Knights bring change and movement. Cups typically in a, in a uh, financial spread mean uh, money flow, right? So it, it's like the horse is approaching, uh, you know, the whatever you want to call it, <laughs> the lake to drink from, the stream, the stream of income, the stream of money flow. Okay, so the message there is replenishing the money that was lost or spent, re replenishing the bank account. There's, yeah, there's absolutely opportunities for that. If not two, these feel like two different people or two different opportunities in which there's going to be multiple rounds of interviews on each because they're both very prestigious, right? They're major arcana. One is a little bit more um, hippie, dippy, woo-woo, atypical, eccentric. It could be a startup. There's, yeah, it's, there's something very like Aquarian or Sagittarian about it. It's very free thinkers, different, goes against the grain. It's not what your parents did. It's not what your grandparents did. There's something very innovative and unique about this. The other one, again, it's, it's more traditional. It's more a teacher or a banker or a lawyer. It's this one, it would be hard to categorize. It's like, well, this is your job title, but it's almost like you have to explain what you do because just giving your job title wouldn't do it. Honestly, we'll clarify, but both these opportunities seem really beautiful. And for some of you, I know you're not all leaving your job. Some of you may be trying to work your way up into a new role or a position. That's what these can represent as well. It, it could be upping your game or upping your salary to take on a new role. For some of you, this, uh, you, I mean, you may work in a courtroom, you could be a judge, you may work uh, for the government, yeah, you could do, you know, lawyer, something like that. This is almost like a spiritual healer, even in terms of uh, healing the body, you may do Reiki, you may, a little earth angel, right, helping, healing people, it could be a doctor or a nurse, but for most of you, though, I was just saying it's atypical, it's more, um, what is the word for that? Um, there's a, a perfect word that I cannot think of right now, it's, um, esoteric but eh, that's not really it it's it's untraditional <laughs> it's an untraditional healer uh it may have some sort of it's not a bad reputation it's people are confused by it or they don't totally understand what that it could be like an astrologer right it could be something like that it's it's a little bit atypical but it's not to say you're the first to ever do it uh in fact maybe that's why you're drawn to it because there's a huge market for it and you're like Psh. I could do this better than anyone's ever done, right? Well, I would capitalize on that. I mean, this is the Empress card, right? It's Jenny Lewis Tarot, so it's his head's gonna roll. That's one of her songs. But very positive card in a money spread. You have the Empress, you have Justice, and you have Temperance three in a row. Those are significant Capricorns. So let's look at this even further. Yeah, I, I see a lot of my Capricorns going on multiple job interviews, and even after that, at least on one, if not both, you're being called back for second round interviews, if not third or fourth round. There's something about following the path or following the trail. I don't know if that's literally how you get to this place to interview. I don't know if it's in backwoodsy or it's very, I'm kind of getting narrow turns. I don't, I don't know what that is, but again, confirmation for some of you. Some of you, I don't know if you work in agriculture or on a farm or something involving environmentalism, uh, lots of trees, lots and lots of trees, or uh, bodies of water. I don't know if you're doing uh, something like uh, nature conservatory, something preservation, something with cl clean water systems. That's coming through here as well. Yeah, taking care of the planet. Yeah, again, that like humanitarian aspect of like, I don't know why Aquarius is coming through very strong in this reading. For any of my Capricorns, oh, okay, well, maybe you're a cusper. So I'm going to say for any of my Capricorns who resonate with Aquarius or have that very strong, 
I don't know if it's your moon or whatever, uh, a strong Aquarian drive. And Aquarius are the little rebels. Revolution, rebellion, uniqueness, innovative ideas. A lot of science-heavy things, especially science Science, body, nutrition, and again, Virgo season, right? That, that's, that's, Virgo is very much tied to our health or our seventh house, which is ruled by Virgo. So yeah, things that are good for the body, good for the planet, good for our, our brother, good for humanity. A lot of that is kind of coming through here too. Um, and it's lucrative. So for, for those getting in, involved in a career like that, I say kick ass. Palm reading and astrology I'm sort of seeing too. So even if that's not something that you're doing professionally, some of you may be reaching out to someone to read your palm or to do your tarot cards or something like that. I'm not at all promoting myself, though I do do personal readings, but I do see that for some of you, it's like you're trying to get divine wisdom or divine guidance on. It's like you already know what path you're on. It seems like you're a weighing out of two options or three options. And even if it's not jobs, it could be locations, it could be branches, it could be clients you're working with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you're, you're looking for uh, more guidance, uh, to uh, more artillery, to arm yourself, to be prepared to go to battle for either one. For those waiting on, okay, some of you are waiting out on a court case. Yeah, absolutely. I was looking at that card too. Tell me about the court case. Is it going to weigh in their favor? Where are we at with that? For a lot of you, it's a divorce case, uh, husband and wife or, or something of the sort. Yeah, there's woo, Capricorn. Congratulations. That feels good. Again, that's not going to be for all of you, but I mean, I asked, you know, is it going to weigh out in their favor? I would say so. That's one of the highest, uh, one of the highest money cards you can get. So again, for those who work in, in the justice system, uh, judicial, so I'm sort of hearing that kind of thing, courtroom, anything involving, yeah, something about laws, order, government, <laughs> law and order, dun dun, there's, there's money to be made there. Yeah, some of you are expert lawyers, independent, and some of you are going rogue, especially, yeah, if there was partnership, like, you know, your three last names joined, <laughs> You're going to go rogue and you're going to make double. You're going to make a lot more money. Damn, Capricorn. So far, this is looking really good. Hold on. All right. So. Do some of you have a rabbit's foot or a little totem you hold or you rub it for good luck? You should bring it on your job interview. Uh, if that, Yeah, I keep getting kind of a rabbit's foot, but it could be a crystal. It could be a little totem. It could be... I don't know, it could be something your mom or your dad gave you, or it's some little totem you have that you think brings you luck. It does. If you, it certainly does, right? It's saying bring it on your job interview, or, or you've you've hidden it in a drawer, or behind a, a book a a bookshelf, or it's something about that that important totem. It's not only good for your energy; it's good for your mind because it's something about the visual of seeing essentially how you manifest money maybe it's a candle maybe it's whatever eh? but, but i am sort of being told bring it out in 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 the daylight or in the moonlight for that matter right if you're doing full moon work it's something about bring, like don't hide it in the closet don't put it in the back of the shelf don't, like don't hide it in a jar bring it out so that you can see it and for some of you it's going to help you name your business or it's going to help theme your business okay this has to do with that spark of personality I don't know what it is, but maybe that's going to become your logo, whatever that little rabbit's foot is or that totem you have. That's very important for some of you in ways that you don't know. I understand. I know. I understand that that message doesn't totally land with some of you. It will make sense later. So you, know, you lose nothing. Dig out the little teddy bear you know, thing that your grandmother gave you when you were six. It, if it means something to you in terms of good luck or abundance, carry that around with you or put it in a very displayed place. Again, something about a cable company or a technology company doing advertisements, especially if you're trying to get your advertisement on TV or promoted on the internet on websites, there's going to be celebration there. Sorry, guys, my throat is dry. <coughs> Quick intermission. I'm so sorry, Capricorn. We're almost there, I promise. Uh, 
Uh, paying particular attention to the herbs and spices you're consuming. Certain herbs and spices are used in manifestation. So I think that almost has to do more with like potions and spells and kind of like, you know, earth, earth witch, green witch magic. So if any of you are into that, it's again, it's focused on your nutrition and your body, what you're consuming, what lotions and oils and all that kind of stuff you're using for your body. Certain certain and I'm not the expert, full full disclosure, but if you were to Google that, you should read more about what is what is um, advantageous for Capricorn to use, I guess, in your career, in your in your money situation, something about that, particularly mushrooms. Again, I don't, I don't really know all about that, but something about that is important for one or two of you. Maybe you're making mushroom stew or soup or something. Anyway, um, so there's also a job opportunity that you feel you missed out on. For most of you, it's because it was not, the position was not offered to you. And so you're, you're grouchy, you're grumpy about it. You may have checked back to follow up after several interviews and they're like, oh, you know, we decided to go with someone else. It's saying some of you are sulking, but what you're not realizing is that that opportunity was not meant for you. <laughs> Something else better, more in alignment with your path is, is or was coming in at the same time. And so it's like, it's essentially saying don't cry over spilt milk. Every, see rejection as a blessing from the universe, um, as divine protection, right? That's what they say about relationships. Uh, rejection is divine protection. Same goes here. There is an opportunity here. Now, uh, granted, there's a lot of opportunities here. Some of them are very lucrative. Some of them are probably, <laughs> there's very, very lucrative and very lucrative. I don't see any bad cards here so far. This is the first one that, that's giving you trouble, but it's not worth the time worrying about it because it's saying that the one that you were hell bent on getting or the one that doesn't matter. You didn't get it. Whether you declined it and regretted it later or they didn't offer it to you, it's because you were not meant to work there. You were not meant to get that deal. You were not meant to work on that project team. There's something else here that, that is worth celebrating. And it probably has to do with joining a group. Um, then there's another one you haven't heard back yet, but I, I don't think the decision has been made. And also there is, I know this is kind of a, a confusing message, but it's, I'm sort of getting something about, I'm just trying to phrase it. Hold on. I, I, th I say this to you all the time, Capricorn, idle waiting versus active waiting. This idea that you're holding out for one job and one position and one salary and you're very hell-bent and determined on it's this or nothing you're sending that message to the universe so it's like if you say it's this position at this school maybe you want to be a professor at this salary or no universe is like okay no because it's like that wasn't meant for you. And so because of that, be careful you're not blocking your blessings by being, here's, not, here's the thing, be specific. Absolutely. Be insanely down to the detail specific. That's how you manifest. But be flexible with your specifics. All right. It's not this all or nothing mentality. It's not saying you're going to have to compromise your big dreams and your big wishes and your big money. But yeah, essentially Capricorn, and I'm just going to be blunt with you, the universe is trying to humble you in, in having this expectation of getting every single thing you want in, in the timeline you want it, at the place you want it, at the age you want it. Life doesn't work like that. It's great to project and shoot for the stars. You have no reason not to. But it's the flexibility of your master plan. It's what's causing delay. That's sort of what I'm getting. Be open to some surprises because they might just be pleasant. They will be pleasant. They'll be positive surprises. But it's almost like you've written your, oh, I don't want any surprises. I know exactly what I want. And it's like, well, I, I don't know how else to say it, but the universe has, the universe has a plan for you too. And they, they want to meet you halfway. They want to give you what you want. Yeah, I, I just, I'm being told there's something about your inflexibility that is, it's very difficult. It's like the universe is like, Capricorn is really difficult to work with. Ace of Swords. Capricorn, you know I love you. Don't be upset. Don't be upset with me. I can already feel that was a trigger. That was a trigger. 
Guys, come on. Tarot is about opening yourself up to new possibilities. Let's see. Flexibility. Think about water, right? King of Cups. That's why this is coming up, I think. Water can be frozen. It can be in blocks of ice. It can be steam, right? It can sizzle. It can be its natural kind of state you see in, in bodies of water. It's still water. It's just coming in different forms. Capricorn, that's all I'm trying to say. That's a metaphor, right? You may want a tall drink of water, but you're going to get a, a tall glass of ice cubes. It can become water, right? You can manifest it. It's like the magician. You had all the tools on your table. But yeah, there's, there's something about the surprise factor of the way you achieve it or the way it comes to you. You may have been like, pass. When it's exactly what you wanted, it just didn't come in the form or the shape you thought it was going to. I hope that makes sense for some of you. And that is exactly what I just said to you, right? Right? This is funny, right? She got a vacuum for Christmas or for her birthday. It's like, oh, what an insult. Thanks. You want me to clean up for you? But look what's in front of her. There's a package that has not been opened yet, but she already has this mentality of, seriously? It's like, I thought my gift was going to be this big and you're giving me something this big. I don't want it. Well, open it first. Capricorn, I'm giving you tough love. I'm going to I'm going to press on the brakes because I can tell this is there's like a sore topic here for one or one or two of you. And I, I can kind of feel it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of tough love. I think that's how we learn important lessons in life. But if you're not ready for that, that's OK. But feel free to click off because <laughs> these are going to be tough love. As the lovers come out. Okay, so does this have to do with a lover? Are you at a crossroads with a lover or with a husband or with a wife about money or about careers? A difference of opinion about where you want to grow and build? <laughs> Good things come in small packages. Good things come with small packages? Is that is this like a sex thing, Capricorn? Is there a performance issue with your partner? I don't know what that's about. Okay, so someone who you've been loyal to, and again, I'm reading through the lens of career, but by all means, you know, switch it with it whichever way you want to if it fits. Someone that you've been loyal to, Capricorn, you're starting to question if you still want to work with them anymore. It's, it's sort of like that conundrum of I've put in so much time and energy, but I'm not sure I'm reaping the rewards of what I thought. And so, yeah, you're, you're contemplating whether it's time to move on or whether you, should, whether you should stick it out a little bit longer. And if there essentially will be justice, right, Libra energy, for, for staying loyal, for sticking with this person. Well, I see Wheel of Fortune and Two of Cups at the bottom of your deck. So, I mean, I kind of think yes. Again, as I was saying, active waiting versus idle waiting. I think you should still be trying to build your career and, and, and don't put all your eggs in one basket, especially given the landscape of what's going on, the, the climate, right, like with, with jobs and money and careers right now. It's all over the place. So, I mean, loyalty is great, but yeah, it's like watch out for yourself. Protect your energy, you know, protect your income, right? There's no harm in going on interviews or putting out resumes, But is it worth sticking around? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Commitment seems good here. Loyalty seems like it will be rewarded. Yes. And then you get the card of reward, especially if this involves a Virgo uh, or a Taurus. But yeah, overall, again, I'm not a proponent of telling people to stay. Just don't just no. you're fine. Like, you should always be working towards something. And that's the thing you are. You're Capricorn. You're the mountain goat. It's ascending one mountain after another. You guys don't really stop, right? Um, so, yeah, as long as you're not at a job where it's like you're frying your brain just sitting in a chair doing nothing at all, that I don't think is going to do anything for you. But if, if you show up and you keep kicking ass and keep doing your job and you're on the cusp of, all right, well, I've been here five years and I'm waiting to reach to the, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to be five years, but... You're at a crossroads of how loyal is this friendship, how loyal is this business partnership, whatever. In the, I think, I don't even want to say in the long term, but I think justice will be served. This is about like truth and integrity, seeing people for who they are, recognizing, honoring their talents. 
These three cards came out. Again, bottom of the deck was two of cups and wheel of, and 10 of cups. Yeah, these are kick-ass cards. So for those who still enjoy what they do, but they're like, eh, like, I, like growing bored or feeling um, antsy, not agitated, but antsy, like, okay, I'm ready for the next thing. I do think changes are coming in. The Wheel of Fortune indicates cycles, destiny, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, for some of you, you're feeling uncomfortable in your workplace. Even if you're kicking ass, you feel like you're being ridiculed for something. Or it could just be like gossip at the water cooler type stuff or mean girl energy. You may feel like a little bit isolated, like you've become the target for criticism or whatever. And... So to that, I would say that's certainly not reason to leave, right? I, and I mean, I feel like that's fairly common sense. If you're kicking ass and you're doing good at your job and your boss respects you, you know, check yourself. Make sure you're not like, you know, steamrolling other people to get ahead because, yeah, then you're going to be the target of some unwanted, you know, criticism. But I mean, if you are a team player and putting your heart and soul into this and, you know, love thy neighbor, I'm being called to say, like, I don't know, people people come and go. The people who are really miserable in a job, they tend to only last so long and then they naturally leave. So yeah, especially if there was like new management brought in or something changed or, or fluctuated where things were good, but then a person brought in a new dynamic where you're like, oh, I don't like their vibe. Now I'm not sure I want to stay. Again, you need to listen to your intuition, but there's good things coming through here. I like these cards a lot. So I would stick it out a little bit longer and, and see what comes because, yeah, there are victories regarding movement and your money. Uh, again, that has to do with either the current place or potentially something you're thinking of going back to, if, if that makes sense to any of you. <clears throat> Don't judge the book by the cover. Don't judge the present by the size of the box. Don't rule out opportunities because they're coming at a different speed or in a different timeline or from a different person than you were hoping for. Don't shoot yourself in the foot, Capricorn. Again, manifest, dream big, make a friggin' list of everything you want and why it will feel good to have that. Great. Awesome. Be flexible with it, though. <clears throat> My artists, my musicians out there, some of you have a really good psychic ability to know. Uh, it's like you're a smooth talker. You know what people need to hear to get them to, to pay. <laughs> now, you you know, be be careful with that Capricorn, right? Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. But you, you have a pulse on what people need to hear to dish out their money. Some of you would make excellent salespeople, particularly in a career where you're representing artists. So, again, I don't know if you're a lawyer or a... I just keep getting, you're, you're smooth with your words. You're a smooth talker. You're smooth on your feet. Some of you need to um, seek out new outlets for funding for your artistic endeavors, for your art projects. Does that make sense? Uh, particularly my musicians and my painters. Some of you may end up asking for a loan so that you can get a studio space to practice in. Yeah, particularly musicians and painters or whatever it is, pottery, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's a victory there. If you ask for a loan or a sum of money that you would have to pay back, I think you'll get it. It's like your your body of work speaks for itself. It won't take a whole lot of it won't take a whole lot of convincing, though if it does, I'm getting like sign seal delivered. Like you'll be able to convince this person. It's not going to be much of a fight. Some of you are afraid to ask for money, especially from family. Some of you are ashamed or afraid to ask for a loan or help help financially from especially a parent or a sibling. And it has all to do with pride and ego. And universe is saying, don't let that stop you. Because by asking for that money, it's, a, it's showing that you're not too proud. And also it's going to put an ending to something. Sorry, it's going to put an end to a, a, a stagnant cycle. It's like you need that money to start anew, to plant new seeds. Look at it like that. That money would be beneficial to you, so don't be shy to ask for it or apply for the loan. It, it, yeah, like I'm getting, it's there's, there's positivity there. And we know that, right? There's some sort of positive payout, particularly with a mother. Some, and I'm not, I never predict death on my channel, but again, if that at all fits your circumstance or scenario, there may be a large sum of money or an inheritance 
from a, a mother or a grandmother. Yeah, some of your travel plans were, were put on pause. It was, it was put on delay, particularly if you travel for your job. If you were going on some sort of tour or like a circulation to promote something or do something, it may have been across the country or globally, something involving travel or potentially children. I think the pandemic put, put a snuff, it snuffed that out. It's not saying you could never get that opportunity back. In fact, you probably will, but don't focus on forcing that right now because it, it just wasn't meant to be, in the, again, in that timeline. Some of my Capricorns have a very specific timeline of, I have to make this much by this age, by this year, and it's like, the universe doesn't give a shit about your, like, I'm sorry, Capricorn, I'm just saying, they don't give a shit about your timeline, they want to know what you want, why you want it, and how you're going to get it, that's where they're like, yep, yep, okay, cool, let's do, like, throw your timeline out the window, it doesn't matter, Capricorn, it just, the timeline doesn't matter here. And again, if you don't like that message, don't take that message. But that is, I'm being drilled to say that to my Capricorns. What's the deal with this Gemini? The Gemini keeps coming up in your reading. Or the lover. And for some of you, it's the romantic lover. So I think we're going to switch to career. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, being on your own for a while, whether that's a business partnership or a romantic partnership, it is meant to help you realign to your true purpose, to your true goals. Look at it as it, the universe is giving you a little bit of breathing space, a little bit of room to like recollect your thoughts, to refocus before you start trying to mend a partnership. It, it's sort of going back to for introspection to focus on what you really want. Um, so before we switch to love, let's just get a few cards on money. Yeah, let's do that one. Tell me about money. <clears throat> For Capricorn, let's say in the coming month, what is the rough projection, September into October-ish? Money for Capricorn, please. Mm. Seven of Pentacles. Okay, so okay. We got a Pentacle card, right? This is like, is it worth sticking around for what I'm currently making? Can I do better? There's, there's an assessment about money. Again, the lovers, the partnership, the Gemini or the... I am sort of getting like the one-to-one. -one, so if there's a co-partnership or a dynamic duo, like you and one other person, something about the collaboration is under assessment. And I think it has to do with equal distributions of money. There may have been a, discre a discrepancy in how much people are getting paid for doing the same job. Yeah, that's it for a lot of you. Something about that involves you, Capricorn. It might be that you oversee two people that do the same job and get wildly different amounts of money. Maybe it's like a legacy thing. Maybe someone was grandfathered in or they've been with the company. But yeah, that there it may even be a lawsuit about that too. And again, I'm not sure it's directly involving you, but you're, it, it's coming up in your spread. So for a lot of you, it's because you, you are the boss or you are the leader over this issue. So it does involve you. For others of you, again, you'll know which one you are. Either you've been making significantly less or significantly, significantly more for a coworker who's doing about the same work. And so there's something about that. Yeah, some, someone is thinking about walking away. And it may have to do with if you're an entrepreneur and you have a team, you may be having someone give you an ultimatum of you need to pay me more or I'm walking. In which case, with the Hierophant in reverse, it's saying to me, I, I, like, I'm not committed to you. I'm not faithful to this partnership or this marriage. Um, and I, I, I just have to say, because I'm in it for me. That's what's coming through. And I'm not going to tell you that's right or wrong, because quite frankly, I'm not getting the details of what happened here. But there may be a severing of ways with a partnership, a, a divorce, if you want to look at it like that. It may involve a Taurus or an Aries. But it's someone that you do have love and affection for. This is not your nemesis at work. This would be a very close friend or a close business collaborator. There seems to be a tiff or an argument and ego and pride are getting in the way for some of you. For others of you, it's just like, shit, dude, like, I, I'm sorry, I can't pay you anymore. That, that's what this role in, involves. That's the price tag attached to it. And so as it, it, that's what it seems like. It's like as much as I don't want to lose you, I'm, 
you know, what do you want me to do? Like, I have nothing else to, to give you, you know? So there may be a divorce from, some, from like a work wife or a work husband, if you know what I mean. Um, now, I did ask about money. I, I wasn't trying to avoid that, but that message wanted to be seen. All right, so bottom of the deck is Ten of Pentacles. It's not in the spread, but the energy is showing up almost kind of effortlessly. Like, it's there. It's top of the deck, right? Well, it's bottom of the deck, but we always, for those who know tarot, right? We, it's face up. That's the overall energy or theme. Ten of Pentacles. So you're looking to grow, obviously, right? You're watching a money reading. You're at seven right now. Something about the partnership or something about a relationship with a father is coming to play here. Again, asking for a loan, asking for a handout, asking for some money would be beneficial to some of my Capricorns out there. It would get you out of a bind or whatever, get you the extra degree you need where then you can start. Do you know what I mean? There's a couple hoops you have to jump through, but Ten of Pentacles is showing up at the bottom of the deck. Some of you may need to take the lower paying job to, to coast by for, I don't know, a couple months, a couple years. I, I don't even want to tell my Capricorns that, but you do have Eight of Pentacles, which is the artisan, the apprenticeship, becoming the master of your craft. The Ten of Pentacles is not here yet, but there is something you need to commit yourself to that would, I heard raise your vibration, but really it's um, improve your abilities, improve your skill, taking an extra course, just reading a book, right? Reading a book about what you do, um, asking someone to be your mentor, networking more, uh, like taking taking someone out for coffee who who, you know, whose job title you would one day want, get to know them. There is opportunities for learning, again, in Virgo season, that makes sense to me, that Mercury energy, the mind, the thought, let's increase the intelligence, increase the output, increase the input, really, the knowledge coming in and then the performance coming out. Money looks stable. Um, there may be an opportunity for a new job with the emperor. <clears throat> But there is also something about walking away from an opportunity that might be lucrative, but the thing is you don't want to stay. So, it, I mean, not to, it sounds like a cop-out, but it really rests in your hands, Capricorn. Seven of Pentacles is not a bad card, but the money is there, but you're not necessarily happy making it. That's sort of what I get. Ten of Pentacles exists at the bottom of the deck, but there, yeah, there's, there's people coming in. It's like there's conundrums we got to solve about the co-workers or the family or the people that are... That are uh, that are coming into this spread. Something about that is impacting your finances. So, all right, let's transition into love. Tell me about Capricorn's love life. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a long one. Love for my Capricorns. Capricorns in love. Shout out, shout out time to, I don't want to botch her name. She has an Instagram name. The They Today, I think it's called. Is that her? Or is that your daughter? You know who you are. <laughs> You're my friend who's been supporting me from the start. Um, I, asked, I asked which signs we should read for first. And she said, Cancer, Capricorn, and Gemini. I'm like, those are my three favorite signs to read for. I knew we were in sync. It's not The They Today. That's your daughter, who's also a tarot reader. I don't know. You know who you are. I love you. I got mad love for you. Anyway, all right. Capricorn's love life. Capricorn. Let's see if cancer shows up. Am I right? Am I right, Capricorn? <laughs> cap. Cap, cap, cap. In love. All right. Wow. Those came out very fast. Wheel of Fortune. All right. Positive. Posy vibes, as I like to say. This came out solo. All right. So there's a very positive outlook with an Aquarius or possibly a Sagittarius who is in the limelight. Sagittarius who gets a lot of attention, which that could be intimidating, Capricorn, but... <laughs> oh, so many cards. All right, let's do these. All right, so some of you are going to continue to be indecisive about people, or if you're with someone who's a juggler who has multiple people, you already know that, Capricorn, or it's you. For some of you, you're, you're going to stay doing that, which, I mean, from my perspective, doesn't necessarily seem healthy, but, you know, to each his own. Okay, okay, it's because for some of you, you're involved with someone who's married, Ten of Cups, and you're very sexually attracted to them, but they're not all in because, they, because either you're the side piece 
or they're married or something like yeah absolutely that's the story there king of king of pentacles is the the husband father card they're married they probably have a lot of money they probably treat you right but yeah it's it's like a sex thing sorry sorry that was harsh and brutal but i just gotta say it. all right knight of wands so th someone who you are very competitive with but it's it's very friendly competition it's uh it's actually kind of, it has a very strong flirtatious vibe. It's someone either you work with or you're on like a sports league with them or you, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's flirtatious. It's very, uh, yeah, there, there is love there. It, again, it might be a Sagittarius. It could be an Aries Leo Sag. They're a little bit wild. They might even be a little bit too immature for you, but you do like them. And I, I am almost feeling this element of like rolling your eyes at them, like, Oh, they're such, like, I just kind of, like, they're such a shithead, but I kind of love them. Like, like, they, they're their own worst enemy because maybe they don't make good choices, but you do love them, and I do think they love you, too. Yeah, you're going to continue to message with them, um, and they may already have a child, specifically an air sign child. They are solid, despite their playful appearance or their immaturity. They, I think they are okay with their money. They, they are... They're solid. They're holding it together, especially if they have a child. I mean, know that this person has probably had a difficult past with an ex or a spouse or something, but all things considered, I do like that. And I mean, Ace of Cups is beautiful and flat out, this is someone you're going to have a lot of fun with. Um, I'm not actually getting player vibes on that one. I'm not. I actually think it's very pure. I think it's very cute. This other one I am absolutely getting player vibes with, potentially a Taurus. All right. So then who's the person from your past that is giving you anxiety? I sort of sense this is someone you can't stop thinking about. Um, and yeah, it's like you don't want to let them go. It might be a Gemini. What's with that? Mm -hmm. Queen of Swords. Cut it. I just thought of Joey Gladstone in uh, Full House. He goes, cut it out or however he does. He has like, you guys know. <laughs> Any Full House fans out there? Oh, okay. So for some of you, it's a cancer from the past. Hey, there's the cancer. Three of cups. All right. Possible. Possible. Six of cups and the moon. All right. Not terrible if it's a cancer. The reason being you have soulmate energy, you have a reunion and cancer is ruled by the moon. Um, so this is something your subconscious is not letting go of because it's I'm sort of getting your intuition is telling you there might still be something there. But if that's the case, what's causing you anxiety? Why are you not reaching out and calling them? This may also have to do with a musician. Uh, and it could have been a their lifestyle didn't allow you to be with them. It could be that they had to move to quite a distance. Or they could have been the person about going on tour. Didn't we say that? I am sort of getting something about like traveling to many countries to do something. <clears throat> This, this person who used to take you dancing or did you guys dance under the stars or something about, or maybe they're a dancer or again, a musician, something about that. What, what is, someone's defensive here though. Someone has their, their guard up. Tell me about this person from the past. It doesn't have to be a cancer guys, but something or someone from your past is giving you anxiety. And there, here's the thing. It's not someone that you hate because there's soulmate potential there. It's someone you probably want a reunion with. But okay, so I'm sort of sensing that they they may have cut it off. It also there's also Libra energy here with the Queen of Swords. Yeah, cut it. I, I I'm getting mixed messages. Yeah, <laughs> there's indecision. You're getting mixed messages too. Is that what caused this to fall? One day it was all fun and flirty, and the next they were cold. I, that's sort of what I'm getting. You're at the crossroads. And again, this can sometimes denote travel, travel opportunities. It's almost like you would have to travel to go see them, but it's almost like you don't want to spend the money to go do that to be disappointed. That's sort of what I'm getting. This may involve a Pisces as well. You keep having dreams about them, and that may be what, what's making you reconsider. Because it could be when you're awake and kicking ass during the day, you don't think about them at all, but they keep showing up in your dreams. And that's probably a sign that they're thinking about you too. I mean, I'm just going to say it at minimum, if it's causing you that, I would open the door up and see how you can at least fix it or make it right. If not, if not, yeah, like I'm sort of getting it. It would be like reopening a wound. There's a lot of loaded, heavy energy there, but it may actually bring you peace of mind to get out of that that state of confusion or mystery of what did I say or what did I do or vice versa, where do I stand, blah, blah, blah. 
I think you kind of got to clear it up, tie up the loose ends. And maybe this could be something very beautiful if you are indeed soulmates. Or maybe you're going to be like, all right, I revisited that. I'm going to go the other way now. But at least, you know, I closed out the cycle properly. It's no longer like like a baggage. It's no longer mental baggage I'm carrying around. So then you have, oh, there's another Capricorn involved. And okay, and a, and a Cancer again. All right, so there's probably multiple Cancers here. Yeah, there. So you may work on a team with another Capricorn or a Cancer, and you, they, yeah, it's like you and the other person are are flirting while the other person is is there too. It's not third party. I I don't think for most of you, unless they're married. Capricorn, stop barking up that tree. There's something really beautiful with Capricorn and Cancer, but you probably work together or or bake together. Are you part of a cooking class or a baking club? Yeah, there's flirtation, but it's very cute. It's very sweet. This person was divinely guided. They're going to make an offer to you. They're going to ask you out. Yeah, there's soulmate potential here, too. Sometimes this can... Wow, Capricorn! Sometimes this can be wedding bells and wedding contracts. Soulmate energy, very cute. Again, earth and water. For a lot of you, this is Capricorn and Cancer. Um, you have High Priestess and the Devil. That's you. Look how amazing these cards are. Actually, this, this deck was given to me by my Capricorn friend. What's up? If you're watching, I miss you. Hi. <laughs> and then you have the star again. So more Aquarian vibes. In this, it, it seems more divinely guided. Like it was your North Star to follow this path, particularly with a career where you might just meet a soulmate on the job or through through mutual friends at work. Yeah, I mean, for this this to me says contracts of, of uh, soulmate potential. Again, written in the stars, divinely guided. Swift forward movement. This could even be planning a honeymoon. If you guys are already married and you had to like shelf your honeymoon because of, you know, COVID or whatever, this is saying you may actually be moving forward yeah, with a honeymoon, possibly with a Sagittarius. Um, or is the Sagittarius the one who's giving you anxiety? That's sort of unclear to me. But there, yeah, there's offers coming from a water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. All right, Capricorn, that's what I got for you. Um, I hope you like that reading. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below. It resonates. I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye.